Hi everyone, Marriott Espresso Press Design. Thank you for stopping by. <coughs> Welcome. I'm hoping I don't lose my voice. So I'm going to take a drink before I start. Our weather. <coughs> Our weather has been so changeable. It's very hard to get used to. Two days ago we were near zero and tomorrow will be 50 degrees. <laughs> so you never have time to adapt. But today um, I'm going to do a paper technique and then I'll show you what you need in a moment. First, I'm going to do a little flip through of the latest products. Uh, French postcards of an ephemera, a very <clears throat> sweet little kit, and uh, I've included all the postcards because some of them were tinted, some weren't hand colored and some weren't and there were multiple variations some have writing some have some don't so i really wanted to keep the french as much as possible and um there is one image in here this one that has two different styles two different colorations so i included both and then after I put up the product, I tried it on presentation paper. Presentation paper, Epson presentation paper absorbs too much ink. So I decided to lighten page two. And that's in the description. So there were a couple of them sold. So I hope they will go back and revisit to note the change in the product but it's a beautiful little hand-drawn postcards and the second one is floral messages very simple um, and I also think I changed I changed the location of my lighting in here, so I think it's actually improving <laughs> the video quality of the representation. It appears to be. And that's actually not quite so gold, but a little more. It's much, the background is more pale. In between what I'm seeing here in the monitor and what you're seeing but it's a nice little kit especially there's a double print off especially if you're doing a yearly journal there's even a winter Christmas type page that you can include or not include and uh, plenty of room for your own for your own embellishments, clusters, whatever you would like to add to a page. The florals are absolutely beautiful. And uh, it's just a lovely little floral kit. So we don't want to, I'm here at five minutes already. <laughs> don't want to take that much time but and there are 16 pages so that's housekeeping so you know how you always try these bow techniques and you're never You're never really impressed with the results. Well, I'm happy to say I try them. Of course I try them. Um, 
I do like trying new techniques. But I'm happy to say this is one that actually lives up to the faux technique. And it is Mamagami, a Japanese paper kneading technique, where they needed, I believe it was mulberry paper, and then incorporated the paper into fabric clothing, I believe. And once you do this, I wish I could translate the tactile experience, but it literally does feel like paper, or not paper, fabric. And you will just be wanting to sit here and touch it all day. <laughs> so, I've tried it with several different types of paper. This is just uh, printed from one of my kids, beautiful memoirs. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with it yet, aside from sit there and feel it all day. So I just um, matted it, loosely glued it and matted it because I want, I really want to retain the tactile experience of it. And um, to incorporate this as a page in your journals would be fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Or a, a flip, flap, <laughs> or a little, you know how they make the, um, sample fabric ideas something like that was was all I could think of at the moment when I did um, run it through the Sizzix die cut you can still it's still very tactile but um, I didn't exactly like that the, all the wrinkles got ironed out. <clears throat> so I have to um, play around with discovering how to um, retain the tactile feel of it and still create something. So I tried it on several different types of paper. This is tracing paper, absolutely beautiful. I even tried it on magazines as my original first, one of my first videos. I'm happy to say that this will actually make magazines usable for me. <laughs> I, I never use magazines. Um, I don't like the glossiness, but this will, I just wish you could see what it's like. I mean, it literally even, it no longer feels like paper. It feels like fabric, acts like fabric. And I am <clears throat> amazed <laughs> at what happened. This one, I took some very um, watered down metallic acrylic because I wanted to try to capture the gold that I saw in traditional Mamagami papers. And then I tried, um, I noticed that it doesn't matter what, it almost doesn't matter what type of image you choose because you basically just end up with patterns. And so then I thought, okay, let me just try something stupid. <laughs> and well, I don't mean stupid, stupid, but you know, like this is a window, there's a table. This is a chair, that's a hutch, that's a painting. <laughs> Sorry, 
But then you basically just end up with patterns and it looks and feels like fabric. I'm just, it's just amazing. So I tried magazines a few times and I am truly blown away by what I could, the possibilities of this. And I spent far too long. <laughs> I thought, okay, I just want to try one more, one more, one more. So I, then I moved on to just trying uh, a printed digital. And that worked just as well. So what you'll need is an image of your choice. And that's pretty much it. Some people used oil. Some people use um, hand lotion. Lotion. I didn't use either because I didn't want that. Didn't want any of that on my paper. And I thought, well, if it's going to work, it's going to work. Traditionally, they use a type of starch. I'm going to post one video where they do have a recipe for adding tapioca starch, but I didn't, I personally didn't find it to be necessary. And amazingly, virtually all the shine is gone from the paper. And if you want to add it at the end, you can put some acrylic gloss back on top or mod parch. So that's what you'll need. So I'm just going to show you how to get started here. I chose this image. Why they begin folding at the corners, I don't know. And the other thing you'll need, you're going to be wanting to wash your hands if you're using a magazine because your hands get covered with black ink and it's kind of disgusting. I didn't notice that happening with a print off but I did notice it with magazines. So I have an alcohol soaked alcohol soapy cloth next to me but if it's worse than I can handle <laughs> and it doesn't work very well if there's a split in this clip it's because I went to wash my hands but this is all you're going to do Folding and folding and folding your paper. Be a little careful of your fingernails, although paper paper is kind of a meat. There, I got a tear already, but that's okay. Tear right in the center. So this is basically what you're going to do is just keep crumpling and folding and eventually there won't be any crunch left in your paper. And unfold the paper will appear to shrink but it's not actually shrinking and then do it again from what I understand you want to try to get the wrinkles evenly distributed 
so that you are sure that you broke down all fibers. So, I know this is very simple, but I can feel it beginning to change its character already. But I did it about, I don't know, 15 times or more. Yes, already it's beginning to feel different. And look at my hands. <laughs> that's that's the only bad part. If I have if there, if I don't want this to be too long, but if I have enough time, I'll do I'll do another image. If I didn't lose it, no, I have another one here. But this was just. I'm always looking for something for mixed media that doesn't require making a mess. I have another another new thing I tried up here to the side. If there's time, I'll show it to you. But in the end, I always want to adapt it because. I just don't have time and I just nor inclination to keep getting out paints and rollers and gesso and you know when I come in here I want to relax I don't want to clean <laughs> and having to keep get up clean my brushes clean my plate gather my materials for the second part of the technique. That's just not for me. Oh, there's the back. And the back is just lovely. Look at that. But already I can feel it becoming Looks like a, which one, where'd it go? This one to me <laughs> looked like a kimono. It is just truly a keeper technique for me. Almost as, maybe as good as the, um, Block printing. I love ex I love explore. I love paper making. I love I love traditional techniques. Dyeing. Well, I don't I don't dye as often as I would like to, but paper making blog printing. I love the traditional techniques and it's, I mean, it's just, wispy, the, the feel of it, I wish you could feel it. I truly wish you could feel it. And it's just amazing to me. So I will probably come up with something to do with this. Not quite sure what yet, but I will, I am certain. And look at that. Well, one of my ideas was a locket, you know, using my faux metal, you know, but to cut it out like a frame. Look how vintage that looks. Just absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. 
I am so impressed with this. Even the modern texts, I don't know if you can see that. Even the modern text takes on a totally different character. So I would encourage you to try all different types of paper. Look at that. Look at how vintage that looks. I would like to try some metallic watercolors. There. There's the top of the, the text in the image. Let me see if you can see that. But even that begins to look vintage. Truly amazing. Truly amazing. Okay, let me see if I can quick wipe off my hands here. Ah. Move on to the next. Probably, probably I'm going to uh, chop this in half so it doesn't take so long. With my faux paper tear. Wait a minute. I have the wrong one because I did there. I did tear off all sides previously. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you've had a nice weekend and a good start to your week. This one, even though the paper is much thicker, it actually doesn't take much longer. Tracing paper was lovely. Um, I haven't tried cardstock, but I imagine that would give you something that resembles leather. So, I have a couple of announcements regarding my shops. I've uh, decided that aside from my best sellers, um, I'm going to, well, first of all, I've, I've lowered my prices almost half. And I decided I'm going to. Um, redo all my product offerings and stay within Etsy file size limits. And rather than rework 100 products, which would take three to 400 hours, I've tried to um, I've tried several ways to um, try to reduce the time of that, and I simply can't. So I will never see a return on that investment. So I've decided it's just easier for me to phase out the old products and create new products that are within Etsy file size limits. Eliminate the 
extra work for myself on Etsy, as well as the customer frustration of having downloading, not understanding how to download from a phone or device or whatever. Sometimes the newer device, the newer phones, I, it's possible. But I don't know. I'm not, I'm also not willing to keep up with technology that changes every five minutes <laughs> to continue to um, accommodate things like that. So that's what I decided. It's Shopify where I don't have any of those issues and I can upload any size product and they invest in their platform pretty soon I'll be able to easily bundle products so the product offerings on Shopify and Etsy will be different and Etsy products are just going to remain within their file size limits at lower prices, generally. And I did figure out a way. At first I was like, okay, so which one do I choose? JPEG or PDF? And in the end I decided on PDF. Because the printer, well, the printer's professional printers print from the PDF today so I chose PDF just because uh, I can often put some more pages in a PDF rather than um, keep with a press quality JPEG with no loss of quality so I went with PDF, but still there might be one, two, three, four, or five PDFs, depending on the image size, file size, but everyone should end up being a lot happier. That's, oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. Let me just take a credit card here and um, so you can, I mean, you can see that you can tear them, you can wet them, you can paint on them, you can ink them. <laughs> It might be nice to try to rub over that with a metallic ink rather than go at it with water. But um, I wanted to try to get the gold to seep into all those crevices. that it more closely resembled the traditional paper which you can just do a Google search and then images where you can see what it looks like with the gold in it and there there you go I should probably do that a few more times but you, you want to, once you try it, you'll get it because 
you can literally feel the paper changing and that's just too hard to explain on camera. But you can feel it. It becomes like a piece of cotton. This type does. The tracing paper feels a little different. The magazine feels a little different. The magazine feels more like a thinner cotton. But it is just truly astounded. And I'm truly in love with this. It's just a matter of what am I going to make with it yet now. And maybe next week I'll have something. But for right now I just chose to come up with something to keep the tactile feel. And if you have any suggestions, I mean a page in your journal. I would do an entire page. I would do an entire book of this actually if I could. <laughs> and it wouldn't be for anything except feeling. But of course you'd have to intersperse it with writing pages. But I truly cannot describe what it's like and how beautiful it is. Okay, I'm taking too much of your time for kneading paper. So that's going to be it, but do it at least 15, 20 times. But I, I, I assure you, you'll begin to feel You'll begin to recognize when you're at the end. And this, I mean, it no longer feels like a magazine. Truly, it doesn't. And this one, even with the paint on it, it feels a little different. It feels a little more stiff. But it definitely still doesn't feel like a magazine. And these ones are so thin. They do not feel like a magazine at all. So that's it for this week. I This is one that you can um, rest assured is going to not disappoint in what you think is going to happen. I mean, that is absolutely beautiful, aside from my black hands. Okay, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll come up with something and uh, maybe we'll do, maybe we'll do a project with it next time. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you for your time. I truly appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.